According to the British Heart Foundation, cardiovascular disease kills around 200,000 people each year. Earlier diagnosis and a faster and more convenient way of carrying out that diagnosis could obviously save many lives. A research team at the University of Leeds, with funding from EPSRC, are developing a device that could do just that. The team is led by Professor Ben Varco. What we've developed is a device that can detect very, very tiny magnetic fields. The, the magnetic fields that, that we can detect are smaller than the magnetic fields that are produced by the heart. The truly novel aspect is the interdisciplinary nature of, of what we're doing. We're taking atomic physics and medical physics and putting them together to create a, a novel device. What our aim was, was to develop a device where we could take the magnetometer to a patient in a hospital bed where the patient is comfortable, they can have an image taken, the image is recorded in a way that all of the noise is eliminated by the careful design of the apparatus rather than by the environment that the apparatus was placed in. If you could picture a uh, camera, if you like, that's going to take a snapshot of a patient's heart, the camera would take an exposure that would last for about a minute over, and over the minute it would capture several heartbeats. The idea is that the camera doesn't need to be in contact with the patient, it could be several millimeters away outside a layer of clothing. And the image is captured using a coil structure that eliminates the noise of the environment and captures only the image from the patient. And by careful design of the cabling we can then send that signal through to a sensor that lives in a shielded environment which records the actual magnetic image. So what we've been developing is the technology and the techniques to bring the signal from the heart to a sensor. And the, the sensor that we're using is an atomic physics sensor that's been around for some time, so we know, we know how it works very well. The difficulty was in mating atomic and laser physics to a device that could be in place in a hospital being used by non-specialists in, in, in laser physics, so one that would, would be robust and would be capable of being used in a, in a relatively electrically noisy environment. So how has Ben overcome the difficulties that other researchers in the past have unsuccessfully tried to tackle? The biggest way that we've overcome it is simply with persistence. We've been stalking around the problem for some time. This is an offshoot of, of two areas of, of research that we're doing. One is in uh, precision uh, in fundamental quantum mechanics, and the, the other area of research is in fundamental measurements of relativity. And so as we've continued to refine our techniques and understand the system more, we've been able to develop our understanding of how the things go together. The real breakthrough was, was bringing in a student, um, Melody Blackman, who came in with a medical physics background and so was able to take what we were doing as, a, as an atomic physics experiment and make it a real medical device. Ben goes on to describe in more detail how the device works and what it looks like. Physically, it's relatively small. It's about a metre square is the, the main workhorse. And contained within that is a, a gas cell. And the gas cell is where all of the, the work is done. This is where we sense the magnetic fields. So what we're looking for is a change in the gas introduced by a magnetic field that, that we apply. And uh, gases, especially rubidium in this case, is, is particularly sensitive to magnetic fields. This sensor is contained, is, is housed in several layers of uh, magnetic shielding, which enable us to reduce the Earth's field by about a, a billion volt. We then have to pipe the signal that we want into this device, and we do that using a, using a technique that's already been widely used in medical physics, it's, it's a series of coils that cancels background noise and keeps only the signal that you're interested in. And by putting those two together, we've, we've developed a relatively small, essentially handheld probe that could be used to detect field. And what, what's interesting about this is that we can detect the magnetic field with no harmful emissions of any kind in a non-contact way where the patient could even keep their clothes on. So, we're really, we're really looking at the, the most convenient kind of imaging.
Due to its unprecedented sensitivity to magnetic fluctuations, the device could be used to detect a number of medical conditions. It's particularly good for fetal heart measurements, uh, where detecting the actual beat of a fetal heart, so the normal technique is to use a Doppler measurement from the surface of the heart. Uh, in this case, you could actually measure the, the heart function directly. It's particularly important in, in fetal diagnosis that you're, that you're non-contact and emission-free. In this case, you, you, would have a, you would have a very comfortable mother and you could do a complete diagnosis of, of, any, of any potentially fatal condition. The other thing that you can use it for is uh, looking at brain function. And there are people around that are looking at magnetic fields originating from epilepsy, for example, and uh, the, way that, the way that the brain responds to, to various stimuli. That was Professor Ben Varco from the University of Leeds. And following clinical trials, it's hoped that the device could be ready to use for routine diagnosis in around three years.